Bangladesh, a country that was known as the Great Bengal before the independence of 1947. The legacy of the Europeans in the Great Bengal or in the Indian subcontinent is more than of 450 years. The Portuguese were the first to arrive in the long association of European explorers. Since the beginning of time, man had to travel to faraway lands to fulfill his needs. From time immemorial, the Arab and European explorers were attracted to the wealth of spices the subcontinent had in abundance. The thousands of kilometers of endless land stretch was the only accessible route for the indomitable explorers and traders at that time. But the frequent plunder by marauding bandits made journey to this route at the Tropic of Cancer unbearable. The immense opportunity of trade started to dwindle. As a result, man was restricted to his known environment and boundaries. Just like the Europeans, who started to think that the world's periphery ended just beyond the vast body of water that surrounded their landmass. It was believed that if a ship set sail on the infinite sea, it was bound to get engulfed by the mist and would never return. During this period, Prince Henry, who was a sailor and a well-versed person, started giving protection to the medley of perplexed traders he encountered, who had faced dangers along the land routes of trade. He gradually established a proper school in Lisbon, Portugal, to churn out skilled sailors with an aim to find an alternate trading channel other than the land route. He soon started plotting a map of the seas based on the descriptions of representatives he had sent to faraway countries and through accounts and narratives of visiting sailors, traders and travelers. Thus, enduring endeavors such as this helped Portuguese sailors with the patronage of the royal family to prepare themselves for a daring sea voyage. The goal was to discover India, the trading heaven by seaway. The commander of that sea fleet was Vasco da Gama, one of the finest students of Prince Henry's naval school, a daring and prudent sailor. The journey started from Lisbon in 1497. Making Europe proud, Vasco da Gama became the first European to reach the naval port of Calicut at the southern shores of India via East Africa on 27 May 1498. It would have taken a decade for European traders to reach there by land. Vasco da Gama managed it within a span of only one year. The door to the greatest trading post in history opened up. The Portuguese did not have to wait much to get the trading permission from Zamrin, the administrator of Calicut on behalf of the then Sultan of Goa, Adil Shah.
In 1505, King Manuel I of Portugal appointed Francisco de Almeida as the first Portuguese Viceroy of India on behalf of the Portuguese government. It is worthwhile to mention here that the onset of the Portuguese in the Indian subcontinent was solely based on trading and propagation of religion. However, they also wanted to establish their favorite kingdom as a more powerful and economically advanced nation in the world through trade. In 1517, four newly commissioned fleet sailed off from the recently established Portuguese trading city of Goa for four new naval ports led by the second Viceroy of India, the great Alfonso de of Portugal. The objective was to establish single-handed Portuguese domination in the Indian Ocean. Under Alexio de Menezes' command, one ship sailed off for one of the most historically important trading places, Malacca. Led by Manuel de la Seda, another ship sailed off for Diu. Antonio de Saldanha started for the Arab Sea and the Viceroy, Lopo de Albagaria himself, sailed off for the then Ceylon, what is today Sri Lanka. Yet another ship, under the command of Di Juan de Silveira, sailed off for Bengal. Though the four ships soon took control of the ports and started trading in and around Malacca, Diu, Ceylon and the Arab Sea, it took 20 years for the ship under command of Di Juan de Silveira to settle down in Chittagong, the reason being the long-drawn conflict over jurisdiction of Chittagong between the independent Sultan of Bengal Nasiruddin Nasrat Shah, the Arakan king Tazata, also known as Ali Shah, and the ruler of Tripura, Dhania Manikya. Finally, in 1536, the Mughal appointed governor of Bihar, Farid Khan, also known as Sher Khan, tried to capture the city of Go, though Sher Khan won the battle. The Portuguese, with their superior armory and strategic placement, on behalf of the then independent Sultan of Goa, Gyasuddin Mahmud Shah, did not let Sher Khan take control of Goa. Thus, the rule of Gyasuddin Mahmud Shah in Bengal got consolidated. Pleased with this, Mahmud Shah left control of the Chittagong port in the hands of the Portuguese. In 1537, in order to conduct free trade, a customs house was established under the guidance of Alfonso de Mello. Nuno Fernandes Freire was placed in charge to run its affairs. Soon, two naval trading ports became very important in the history of trading for the Portuguese. One was named Porto Grande, meaning a big port, located at the heart of Chittagong, and the other was called Porto Pequino, meaning small port, located in Shadgar. The Portuguese continued trading in Shadgar till 1620, upholding amiable relations with Emperor Jahangir and Akbar and they started to gradually flourish not only in Chittagong, Noakhali, Kumilla, Borishal, Joshore, Dhaka, Joydevpur, but also in many other places and got involved with trade directly or indirectly in the region. Muslin Since ancient times, Dhakaya Muslin was the symbol of aristocracy from the Roman Empire to the Mughal dynasty.
Through the Portuguese, the consumer-centric Europeans got to see for the first time the priceless and fabled wonder cloth, the muslin. The Portuguese willfully exported cotton, silk, pulses, handmade articles and many other handicraft items. We have inherited our preference for bakery and confectionery delicacies from the Portuguese. Sweets like chana, shondish, roshomalai and yogurt and curd have also been handed down by them. Food that is very integral to Bengali cuisine like mango, potato, tomato, chili, papaya, guava, pineapple and more such food were introduced by the Portuguese. Even words commonly used in Bangla like janala, almari, baranda, gamla, botam, shaban, shari, kameez, shirt, kirani and many such words have found their way into the Bangla vocabulary. An important milestone was Manuel de Asimkau, a religious missionary in Bengal who with his efforts of almost 10 years from 1734 to 1742 completed work on Bangla vocabulary grammar using Roman scripts following Latin grammar. The vocabulary grammar got published in 1743 from Lisbon. This was the first ever of any form of publication or book in Bangla. In spite of enriching Bengal with a trading infrastructure, language, culture and food habits, the Portuguese did not waver from one of their most important missions propagation of religion. It was the Portuguese who were the first to propagate Christianity in this land. During that time, some of the oppressed in the society and people of different race and religion living below the poverty line took to Christianity, forsaking their own religion. At a point of time, the Portuguese reached the pinnacle of the social ladder through intermarriages and carried on with the propagation of religion and dominance. For instance, in 1610, Sebastião Gonçalves got married to Princess Meng Falong, the daughter of Anna Paran, the second son of the King of Arakan. There are many more instances of such marriages throughout history. Thus, by marrying into the society and converting religions, the Portuguese became the most important people in the business community. They were later to be called Firingis. A measure of the influence and stature of the Firingis in business and trade can be observed from the naming of the important trading centers in Chittagong and Dhaka as Firingi Bazaars. Gradually, the number of converts to Christianity started to flourish in Portuguese-controlled areas. Soon, there became a need for a place of worship. Therefore, quite a few churches and important Christian missionary schools got built, most of which are still standing tall as a testament to the passing eras in history. Hugli district was a village consisting of a few hearts or small trading points. It caught the attention of the Portuguese and from then on it grew into a place of importance and became a resourceful region. They designated Chittagong as the principal trading center and naval base. 
subsequently, in 1580, two trading ports were established near Kolkata at Hooghly and Bandel. Very soon, Hooghly and Bandel transformed into important and big trading centers for India, China, Malacca and Manila. Ironically, it is this port that later became the nemesis for the 150 years of dominance of the Portuguese. All the Portuguese naval bases spread across more than half the world were used to be controlled by the center of power, Portugal. However, in the 17th century, the conflict and war between Portugal and Spain led to a severe lapse in control centrally. The Portuguese East India Company received a serious jolt to its 150 years of dominance in the Indian territories controlled by the Portuguese. It had, in fact, lost its chain of command. The arrogance of some unruly soldiers and the opportunity-seeking Firingis and their cohorts made life unbearable and one of mayhem. When the situation became highly disturbing, by order of the Emperor, Shah Jahan, on May 25, 1632, the then Nawab of Bengal, Qasim Khan, attacked and razed to the ground the Portuguese naval bases in Hooghly and Bandel. Thus, ringing the calling bell for the Portuguese era to end in India. At this time, we see the emergence of the Dutch East India Company. With the consent of the Mughal Empire, begins the fight for control of the Portuguese trading ports. By the end of the bloody war that lasted for 80 years, the Dutch gradually took control of most of the trading ports and naval bases that were until then under Portuguese control. However, some Portuguese traders continued to run their operations and remained in Goa. Historical accounts show the Portuguese to have lived in Bengal till the 19th century as missionaries and engaged in the court of Bhawal Raja. Bengal today is a free country. There is no more the Portuguese East India Company, but they have left behind a veritable legacy of language and food. The tradition to partake sweets at times of news of good tidings will forever remind Bengalis of the Portuguese legacy. The relationship between Bengal and Portugal is a time-tested old relationship of almost 500 years. We hope the friendly relations will continue and further consolidate the bilateral trade relations in the years ahead. Long live Bangladesh-Portugal friendship.